Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm kind of delighted to be here, scared because uh, this felt very ambitious. And when we first told people that we were going to try this, people's responses were often, really? Do you, really, do you want that much trouble in your life? And like Alistair said, more than anything, it felt like, well, if EPAF are going to come to Ireland and if we're here and we're trying to kind of point out that there's a lot being missed by the EPATH, WPATH kind of um, organization, we thought it was very important that we challenge it. And we challenged it in the same town at the same time. And we proposed to keep on challenging it so that like when, when they are in next year, in their, in their next town, maybe in America or wherever, we propose to be a, again challenging it in a civil way, in a, in a reasonable way, but very insistently saying that there is other views and these views are being silenced and they're being dismissed. And the, like Alistair mentioned earlier, you know that some of the reasons people are here are, are pretty devastating. And I would like to take a moment to remind everybody that like, while it's it's so it's so awful to see people de demonized from their jobs and you know get, getting really difficult lives as a result but the real utter devastation for some people's lives like the parents for example where i first kind of really found a huge well of devastation that i hadn't really seen until i was the kind of first kind of about the second week of COVID and the, break and the lockdown. And I'd been asked before, would you, you know, would you help out some parents? And I was like, too busy, too busy, too busy. And then uh, because of the lockdown, suddenly I had nothing to do. So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll run a support group. And I'll never forget that support group. I'll never forget having an online Zoom meeting and all these parents telling me these stories of ripped up families, of you know, doctors dismissing everything they're saying, of doctors being dishonest and lying to the parents and of really quirky, vulnerable, you know, slightly awkward, cerebral, artistic children, you know, falling for perhaps one of the most bewitching line in the world, which is when you're filled with self-loathing and you're awkward and you feel ugly and maybe you're a teenager, but certainly you're feeling at odds with the world and somebody tells you, you can take some medicine and you can be a different person. And that different person can have a different name and a different identity. And nobody would be able to refer to that old loathsome self. Nobody would be able to refer to them because that will be basically banned. You can be a new person and that new person is going to be maybe very, very successful socially. They'll be very different. You know, maybe they might even be like one of those influencers online. I can see how any especially naive people, especially lost people, especially vulnerable people think, yeah, I'll be somebody different. I, I, I'll take that. There was that, like that famous line from the, the poet who said, you know, there's another universe next door. Will you come? And I'm like, yeah, I think I would. <laughs> Let's go. And so they, they've been offered this beguiling line of you could be somebody different and very kind of adventurously almost saying, yeah, I, I'll shed my, my, my body and I'll become somebody else. And then the, the second group, so I said the parents, the, the devastation I saw. Then when, when I got kind of deeper into the event and I realized that um, into the kind of the world of, ge of gender, I realized, oh my God, the detransitioners have been so badly served. I knew detransition was a terrible event. I knew it must be awful kind of dark nights of the soul to come to the decision that you'd made the wrong decision, to actually say, I got it wrong. I thought I had it right and actually I want to go the other direction. And so when that happened, I was shocked to realize that it's not just that they have been beguiled by a lie that doctors basically sold them that they could become a different person. But it was also when they said, I think it's gone wrong. I think I've made a mistake. They're effectively discharged from clinics and told goodbye. Good luck. Don't want to talk to you. And we don't know what's going to happen to you. We don't know anything. It's experimental, so we don't know anything. You're on your own. Good luck. Bye. So when I realized that, I thought, oh, my God. It was like, as we all know, it's, you're peeling this onion and you're going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, so many people are treated so badly in this world. And it's essential that we start kind of 
I suppose, lifting these voices insistently and constantly so that conferences like the one that's happening up the road. And I walked in this morning. I didn't stay long. But I walked in and you could see, you know, a very upbeat, very kind of positive, And you could totally see how you could think this is where it's at. It's something upbeat. It's very positive, And let's all kind of go for this. And then when you get into the actual details of what's going on, you realize this is an organization, WPATH, and they, you know, they've published their standards of care. They had 120 authors. There was an awful lot of work went into it. Many years between the last standards of care and this standards of care. And yet still, after all that work with all those authors, they chose to write a chapter on eunuchs. They chose to write a chapter on non-binary identified people. They chose not to write a chapter on detransitioners. So they, they have discredited themselves. If they could have been turned around, they would have been turned around by now. There's enough voices, there's been enough experts, there's been enough people saying, actually, the evidence is flawed. Actually, there's a very low quality evidence. Base. Actually, this study doesn't really stand, you know, so withstand any kind of penetration. We've said it all. We've said it a million different times. People have said it politely. People have said it very impolitely. People have said it with tears. People have said it gently and quietly to their friends. And it's been a, a, a wall of resistance. And I thought it was ironic and reflective that the president's <laughs> address, the opening plenary of EPAP yesterday, said, you know, he, he literally said, talking about our conference down the road, um, he said that we, um, we have the right to free speech and they ha we also have the right to not listen to other people. I know. And so, well, you do have the right, but it doesn't reflect very well on you. <laughs> do you know? So, <laughs> and so I, I think about how, you know, we've, we've kind of come together and there's so many people from so many different organizations here. And I'm thrilled, most thrilled about that, because I think we all probably disagree on so many things because I'm obviously like I think of my children and when they're sick, like they might be vomiting in front of me or, or have a sore throat. And I'd say, are you very stressed? Because <laughs> I think everything to, is to do with the psyche. So us psychotherapists, we tend to see the psychological and everything. And it's good for us to meet doctors. It's good for us to meet feminists who have a completely different perspective on gender. And that's why I really kind of urge everybody to kind of go down to the you know, bar tonight to meet people out of our cliques, to talk to people. Let's say we need to talk to the lawyers, the you know, the teachers need to talk to the, the philosophers. There's all the different disciplines are actually here today, which is really exciting. The social commentators need to talk to the feminists. You know what I mean? So that everybody kind of starts to get dislodged from their very path theory, because what has happened, one could argue with WPATH, is the path theory of that there was a gender identity. It was very easy and very pleasant on the mind to think we had a solution to something. And we have to be very wary about that. And that's what we're trying to do in Genspec. We're not trying to say that we have any answers. We're trying to say asking questions is a good thing. No more. Like, let, let's allow discussion and civil kind of debate. Let's allow people to get things wrong. And let's be reasonable about the fact that we're going to be wrong many times over. And that's OK, because honestly, that's how the world works. So a kind of a, a lack of kind of tension around perfection is, is very important. For, for not only for Jensbeck, but for us to bring back some normality into this really heightened world. But yeah, there's so many organizations here, it's obviously too many to name, but I did, I did have a flick through the ticket buyers to see who, how many organizations, and it was over 25 that I saw. And it made me think of, you remember Joe Hill, the, the labor activist, he was a miner from kind of 1915, he died from America. And when he he was uh, he was an activist and he was um, executed on a framed murder charge in America. And his last words now, it's reportedly, it's allegedly, but his last words apparently were, don't mourn me, organize. And it's very inspiring because I feel like we everybody in this room on some level has watched the world go very bizarre, take a weird turn where it feels like not only black is white and up is down, but man is woman boy is girl it's it's everything has been turned on its head and it's very hard to feel that you've got any substance when 
everything you know has been proved to be wrong. And so that's why it's so lovely that really since about 2015, 2016, and I know Stephanie's here from Transgender Trend, and I know Denise and is watching from Fourth Wave now online, and all these organizations since then in these eight years, and if, I, if I'll name out a few of them, and I'm sure that I'm going to be told that I miss many, but like it's stunning how much we've organized. We have come together and we've said, actually, I have a point to make about feminists. Actually, I have a point to make about social workers. I have a point to make about therapy or, you know, whatever. And each organization has its own strain. And that's why we're trying to create this big tent. The idea is everybody's listening to everybody. Everybody's probably disagreeing with lots of points. And that's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. That's how we get better outcomes. We're not looking for consensus. We're looking for civil, intelligent disagreement that will get us to better places. So yeah, the famous list I, I wrote out furiously earlier. So Transgender Trends, Sex Matters, LGB Alliance, SEGM, GETA, the GDSN, uh, which I set up myself a few years ago for, for parents, the Countess, Our Duty, Bayswater, EBSWA, the Evidence-Based so Social Workers, Women's Space Ireland, ICGDR, Lisa Littman's, Institute for Gender Dysphoria Research, Thoughtful Therapists, Fair in Medicine, Women's Right Network, Standing for Women, Women's Place UK, Gay Men's Network, Critical Therapy Antidote, Can SG Clinical and Advisory Network, Sex and Gender, I should really know that one. Fourth Wave Now, obviously, and Parents of Inconvenient Truths About Trans. That's just me at a flick looking at the ticket holders. That is a phenomenal number of organizations who've all come together and said, we need to kind of, say our peace and this is all in the last eight years and we are part of that so i think that's great i think it's great that we have managed to come together and i think we're starting i think most of us agree we're starting to go to a new chapter this feels like a watershed being able to have an, a conference and not being feeling that it had to be closed down or behind closed doors and stuff like that and i think now that we're moving into maybe a better place where maybe people are starting to come around to the idea that there are other perspectives and that there's different countries are coming to different, like we all know, and different countries have come here, Sweden, Finland, Germany, America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, UK, obviously loads. So people have come together in goodwill. And I think it's very important that we harness some strength from coming together. And instead we uh, realize that, yeah, we can, we can, organize our way out of this mess that we've been put into. And I think this is part of that.